My name is Vicki Leeds, and I'm your host for The Vicarious Traveler, a show about people and where in the world they go to pursue their dreams, to work, and to have great adventures. This morning, I'd like to welcome from Cupertino, California, a very special guest, Susanna Zyreski. Susanna is quite the world traveler, having lived in nine different countries and visited over 40 more, and she's only in her early 30s, so she's been a busy gal. Susanna is also fluent in seven languages and has rudimentary skill in a few more, and she considers herself a global citizen with good reason. Born in what was the Soviet Union and raised in the state, Susanna has recently written a couple of very handy and informative books. One is called Travel Happy, Budget Low, Over 200 Money-Saving Tips to See the World, and the second one is Language. Languages Music, Over 70 Fun and Easy Tips to Learn Foreign Languages. So, Susanna, Travel Happy, Budget Low, Over 200 Money-Saving Tips to See the World. Um, As you mentioned earlier in an interview, that motivation engenders creativity, and your book has some really great suggestions, so obviously you've been really motivated. And these suggestions aren't just about saving money. They're about taking care of yourself, sometimes by avoiding travel snafus, and other times simply about making your trip more enjoyable and having some ease. And these tips range from the simple and the basic, like wearing slip-on shoes to the airport, to posting your rants online. And you actually had a really interesting thing to say about customer service that um, I would like to read because it's it's just another way of looking at things that I don't think that um, people might think of. Mm-hmm. Um, and so from the section, um, miscellaneous section, one of the sections, there's a whole little thing about keeping your cool. And what... Susanna says is, losing your temper while traveling may just ruin your trip. Life isn't an idea, nor is international travel. Of course, you can voice your concerns and complaints to the management of the establishment that did something wrong, but don't expect the customer service that you may get at home. Travelers from the U.S. who are used to the customer is always right attitude at home are notorious complainers when it comes to traveling in foreign countries. If you are from the U.S., don't be an ugly American tourist. Most countries don't have any idea what customer service means. In former communist countries, there were no customers or service, just government-run businesses and shops. People had to wait in long lines for everything. There were no refund policies. Even though it may feel like you're visiting Western shopping malls or familiar chains, they don't operate like you may be used to. Don't expect a smile and a refund for your complaints. It may or may not happen. Go with the flow. Your righteousness may ruin your day. So I thought that was really great because we do tend to assume that things when we go other places are like we're we're used to at home and they're not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, you mentioned over 160 website resources in your book, Travel Happy Budget Low, which cover everything from booking your trip to dealing with health and safety issues to finding good travel companions. Let's look at some of the sections in your book and talk about some of these in depth. I think... As I, um, well, as I just read from the miscellaneous section, I think some of my personal favorite ideas came from that section. But in section one, which is pre-trip basics, one mm-hmm. question that came up for me when I was reading that was regarding travel insurance, something I've never invested in. Do you use it regularly? I do. I do. Um, and it's because at the times when I didn't have travel insurance that I realized I needed it because it became very costly afterwards. I, I just went to New York last week. I came back on Monday. I was there for a book fair, for the book fair, promoting my books. And I got it, you know, and then, then the swine flu outbreak happened in New York, and I thought, okay, I just want to have insurance. Maybe it's going to cost me 20 or 25 bucks, but if I have to cancel my trip because of swine flu or whatever, I want to have the insurance. Um, so travel insurance is, is very important because let's say you buy one of those cheap, non-refundable tickets, and then you have a medical emergency, if you don't have travel insurance, you're just going to lose that ticket. That Whatever money you spent has just gone down the toilet. So it, it, with travel insurance, if you have a medical emergency or death in the family or something like that, then you get that money reimbursed through the travel insurance company. It, it's also important whether you have a medical problem while you're traveling. You know, you're, it depends if your medical insurance, if you have it in the United States, will even cover international medical emergencies. So that, that, that's one of the main reasons. Um, you know, also sometimes people buy things in cash. They don't use credit cards. Well, if you buy them in cash, you don't have the credit card company there to back you up. And I had this happen, and I'm not kidding. I was traveling. Um, I was living in Bosnia, and I 
uh, decided I wanted to come back to the United States. And the cheapest plane ticket was with Swiss Air, and I bought it in cash because they didn't take credit cards. And then Swiss Air went bankrupt. I'm not kidding. It did. 2000, it was like a month after September 11th. Swiss Air went bankrupt. I was in Bosnia. I had quit my job. I had almost moved out of my apartment, and I had a worthless plane ticket that I had bought in cash. And I was basically in trouble because, you know, I wanted to go home. And then luckily the Swiss government bailed out the airline, and then I couldn't fly to San Francisco. I had to fly to Chicago and then pay for my own way back to San Francisco. And if I had bought travel insurance, I probably would have um, been able to get the travel insurance company to pay for my ticket from Chicago to San Francisco. Good point. But, yep. In um, Section 2, which is packing, there's lots of great ideas. I personally really like the tip on taking earplugs, as well mm-hmm. as the one as investing in an immersion water heater. Mm-hmm. And then in packing also, but later on in a, a different section, the part about food and beverages, you suggest the possibility of investing in a collapsible mini cooler, which I also think is a really great idea, mm-hmm. though I'm not really familiar with them. Um, what are the most essential things you, you think about when packing? Well, last year I made the discovery about the vacuum packing bags, and I love them. They're these plastic bags. You can buy them at the container store. I think they sell them at Target. You can buy them on the Internet. They're called space bags or vacuum packing bags or travel space bags. And they're quite cheap. They're like 3 or $4 each, and you stuff your, you know, your clothes into a plastic bag, and you roll it up very, very, very tight. You close it with a type of Ziploc type of um, seal. The idea is that you get the air out of the, the bag. And then you can put the bag into your suitcase, either all rolled up or you can just make it flat. And it significantly reduces the amount of space your clothes take up in your bag. And think about it. If you're traveling in the winter and you put a couple of sweaters in your suitcase, they could take up a great portion of your suitcase because they're so big. So if you're able to get the air out, and, and pack them in there. It's, it's very convenient. So I, I really like that one. Um, a travel pouch is really important, especially if you're traveling abroad and you're, you have your passport or if you're in a country where it's not safe, you know, to, to be walking around with, with your valuables. The travel pouch is basically this, um, this on, well, it's kind of like a cloth envelope that you uh, where you can put in your money, your passport, your credit cards. And, uh, you know, a lot of people have a... a right on their belly, and they have like an elastic band that, um, that, that basically keeps it around their, their waist. The problem with having right on your belly is it sticks out, and it looks like, you know, you have this big envelope on your belly, and people can see it. So what I suggest doing is actually um, stuffing it in between your pants and your underpants. So it's actually like, you know, it's not noticeable. It's in the back. Another really great thing that you can get are what are called uh, travel hidden money belts. And they look just like a normal belt, but they have a zipper in the middle where you can um, fold bills and put inside. So that way, um, if someone you know wants to steal your money, they're not going to take off the belt from your pants. You just have to remember, you know, that in that belt you have money. So when you're doing your laundry, you don't put that belt in the laundry because it's, it is it's usually made from cloth. Um, that's a wonderful thing. And then, um, as you mentioned, the uh, the immersion water heater is great, and it's basically like this little coil, an electric coil that you just plug into an electric outlet, and then you put into a container of water, and you can boil water. So you can save money by making your own tea, your own hot chocolate, coffee. You can even, you know, have like a soup or a boil an egg. Well, plus, I remember my father always traveled with one of those, and it was really delightful that, you know, he would always bring my mother a cup of coffee in bed while we were yeah. traveling, before she even got up, that he would make her, you know, her little cup of coffee, and she always loved it, and it made her so happy. And so <laughs> I grew up I grew up with a, a, a person that had one of those water heaters. Um, you know, one thing I thought of as a tip, that if I had entered yeah. your contest, um, one thing I found really handy when traveling that I thought I'd mention is thrift stores. They can be really fun, and if you forgot something and it wasn't that important and you don't mind, you can always go to a thrift store pretty much in any country and kind of immerse yourself in the culture and find whatever it is that you need and, you know, not spend a lot of money on it. 